This video explains how to change one specific label of a ggplot2 facet plot to bold or italic using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create a data frame, as you can see in lines two to four of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line five. And then you can see that we have created a data frame containing six rows. This data frame contains three columns, whereby the first two columns X and Y contain numeric values. And the third column is a group indicator. Now, if you want to draw these data in a ggplot2 facet plot, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines seven and eight of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line eight. And then in the next step, we could draw a ggplot2 facet plot using the ggplot, geompoint, and facet grid functions, as you can see in lines 10 to 12. So after running these lines of code, a new ggplot2 facet plot is appearing at the bottom right. And as you can see, the labels of these facets are currently not bold and not italic. Now let's assume that we want to change only one of these labels to bold. Then we first have to change our data frame. And we can do that as you can see in lines 14 to 18 of the code. So in line 14 of the code, I'm first creating a duplicate of our data frame because I also want to keep an original version of our data frame. So after running this line of code, a new data frame called data bold is appearing at the top right. And then in lines 15 to 18 of the code, I'm converting our group column to a factor and the factor labels of this group column should be equal to group A as a regular character string bold group B and group C. So after running lines 14 to 18 of the code, our new data set data bold is created and we can print this data frame below at the bottom in the console of our studio by running line 19 of the code. And then you can see that the columns X and Y contain the same values as before. However, the group B is changed to bold group B. Now in the next step, we can use this updated data frame to create our facet plot with bold labels. And for this, we have to specify the labeler argument within the facet grid function to be equal to label passed. And we have to specify our new data set data bold. So after running lines 21 to 23 of the code, you can see that our data set is updated and this time the groups A and C are still shown without bold. However, the group B has a bold label. So in this first example, I have explained how to change one of the labels in a ggplot2 facet plot to bold. However, we can use the similar logic to change one of the labels to italic. And we can do that as you can see in lines 25 to 34 of the code. So in lines 25 to 29, I'm once again creating a new data set, which I'm calling data italic. And the only difference compared to our bold data set is that this time I'm specifying italic instead of bold. So after running lines 25 to 29, this new data set is appearing at the top right. And we can print our new data set to the RStudio console by running line 30. And then you can see that we have changed the group labels of our group B to italic group B. And then in the next step in lines 32 to 34, I'm using our updated data frame data italic. And as in the previous example, I'm specifying the labeler argument to be equal to label passed. So after running these lines of code, our plot is updated once again. And as you can see, only the group label group B has been changed to italic. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. 
I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.